Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jessie Leons. This edition's top story, St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19, is bolstered by the Embassy of Taiwan. The Ministry of Youth and Sports builds the talent pool in women basketball. And the National Arts Festival sounds off with poetic justice. St. Lucia continues to receive assistance from its diplomatic friends in the fight against COVID-19. The Embassy of Taiwan to St. Lucia has made a donation of ventilators and antibody rapid tests. More in this report from Fresnel Neptune. The Ministry of Health and Wellness recently received the donation of ventilators and test kits from the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, following a handover ceremony at the Owen King EU Hospital. Taiwanese Ambassador His Excellency Peter Shen says his government remains committed to providing support to St. Lucia in the fight against COVID-19. I'm proud to present to St. Lucia the, this token of care and support from the government and people of Taiwan. Altogether, four ventilators and 3,000 test kits to contribute to St. Lucia's efforts to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. For the past few months, under the leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister Shasni and the efforts of the government of St. Lucia, St. Lucia has been remarkable in response to the pandemic. Prime Minister for St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Shasni, says he appreciates the diplomatic relations between the two countries and the continuous support provided. A genuine friend is one in which uh, it's very easy to be able to measure um, the success of that relationship. And it's times when you need somebody in the smallest ways. And certainly today's um, contribution, significant in, mon in monetary basis. But I also want to say to solutions that probably one of the most difficult things to get hold of in the world today is a ventilator. So it's not even something that money could buy. Um, and that is what makes this gift so special um, that to get four ventilators at this particular time. Minister for Health, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, expressed gratitude to the government and people of Taiwan for the donation, which will assist tremendously in the health sector. Ambassador, I'm always very touched when I get these gifts, when we get these gifts from Taiwan. And of course, we continue to get your assistance at every point in time, with every project in almost every area of our development in St. Lucia. And it is really, we are very, very grateful for these gifts that you bestow upon us. Because they're not just, you know, fly by night gifts or just, you know, out of, you know, just meh to give something. They really and truly address an issue or a problem that we are having in our country. The government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, made a donation of four ventilators and 3,000 antibody rapid tests. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Embassy of Taiwan has also contributed to the Ministry of Education's preparedness for the 2020-2021 school year. Lisa Joseph has that story. As the new academic year opens on Monday, September 7, 2020, students and teachers will be taken to the classroom under the conditions of the new normal dictated by COVID-19. Among the protocols schools are to adhere to in ensuring the health and safety of all is the wearing of face masks. The Embassy of Taiwan to St. Lucia has bolstered the ministry's stock with a donation of 10,000 face masks. Ambassador His Excellency Peter Chen says as a father of two children, he understands the anxiety of parents as well as appreciates the hard work of the ministry in managing the opening of schools. The virus knows no borders. So when Taiwan uh, is capable to uh, contain the spread of virus in uh, our island, I think uh, it's also good for us to provide assistance for all over the world, especially our uh, closest diplomatic allies, St. Lucia. Education Minister Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Michelle Charles, 
expressed gratitude to the Embassy of Taiwan for its commitment to the education sector in St. Lucia. As we endeavor to observe the protocols as prescribed by the Ministry of Health, and on the eve of the reopening of school, this gift of masks from you is so timely, so meaningful. It tells me that you too care about the well-being of our children. I therefore, on behalf of the government, say thank you. At every juncture, at every turn, as we continue to exert tremendous effort to ensure the well-being of our citizens, their economic well-being, their physical well-being, and their health and safety. Here you are again, partnering with us. Right before the opening of school, you have once again showed your commitment to the Ministry of Education. For us, this is very appropriate as our focus really is on health and safety for our students and teachers. And this gift of masks will definitely contribute towards ensuring the safety of our students and our teachers in our school environments. And for this, we thank you very much. The face masks were donated on the heels of a handing over of four ventilators and 3,000 antibody rapid tests to the Ministry of Health. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, the SLHTA, through its Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, has donated much-needed school supplies to the Alexander Family Foundation and events. Donna Ishmael, TEF Program Manager, made the donation on behalf of the organization. The donation, which is the first of its kind from the TEF, was made possible by Serenity Vacation and Tours and the participants of the annual Run for Fun Cruise event held earlier this year. On hand to receive the supplies was Melissa Alexander, founder of the foundation. The charity organization on a yearly basis provides school supplies to children from Castries, Ancillary, Canneries, Soufre and Labry and Environs. On behalf of the Alexander Family Foundation and events, we take this opportunity to thank the management and staff of the Tourism Enhancement Fund for this great initiative in partnering with the Alexander Family Foundation to distribute 43 bags to the less fortunate families in St. Lucia. Every year they do donations to various families in need. Um, this contribution today will go towards families from ancillary canneries, Soufre, Viewfort and Environs. The donation, uh, which is a, a donation of bags and various school supplies, is approximately about ten thousand dollars worth of supplies we were lucky to have been able to make a distribution at the Grove city primary school earlier this year before the impact of covid hit each and every one of us and what makes this donation here today even more special is the fact that it will be able to help a lot of families i know her who have been directly impacted by the pandemic of covid and uh, uh, for, for the families who are receiving these bags, we say, hold on strong, we are all in this together. And the Tourism Enhancement Fund in the coming weeks will be looking at other ways that they may be able to assist persons um, who were impacted by COVID-19. The handing over was held at the SLHTA Secretariat in Rodney Heights, Grosselet. The National Arts Festival, Art Reach, will kick off on Sunday, 6th September 2020, with a virtual staging of Poetic Justice, Survival and Triumph, Voices of the Underground. We have a report on this literary showcase. When I, Helen, think about myself, I almost laugh myself to death. My life has been one great big joke. My children cried, but nobody spoke. Yet I laugh so hard, I almost choke when I, Helen, think about myself. Poet Gina McPhee will be in the spotlight this weekend when the Cultural Development Foundation stages the first of a series of virtual shows for the National Arts Festival, ArtReach. ArtReach will run for eight months on island, resuscitating creative expression from the lows of pandemic restrictions.
So Poetic Justice will be the first, um, the first part of the National Arts Festival. We're going for eight months. Um, so we're starting now and we'll be going until March. So the first um, production that's being brought to you is Voices of the Underground, Survival and Triumph. And this is coming out of, it will be filmed in Castries um, on different streets, Miku Street, Jeremy Street, Kade Street. And part of that is to also feature the history of St. Lucia and bring it into the poetry and into the culture. And so that in particular will be the first um, production that you will see. The National Arts Festival will be showcased virtually. Poetic Justice, Survival and Truth, Voices of the Underground premieres on the CDF Facebook and YouTube platforms and NTN on Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Gina McPhee hopes to appeal to the viewership with poetry that highlights social issues. My pieces really focus on the societal issues that we experience in St. Lucia. Um, on that day, for the, the night, I will be doing three pieces, um, The Mask, uh, soci Society, and also Political Division. Mm -hmm. And all three of these are interrelated in that they speak to issues that we experience here, not only in St. Lucia, but across the world. Following the Poetic Justice production series, the National Arts Festival will continue with a virtual theatre arts series. Then we will go into the theatre arts um, live series, which will kind of take a reality TV style oh. with a little bit of drama here, a little bit of sauce, as we like to call it. <laughs> um, and we're featuring Drama Khan, drama Khan um, theatre productions as well as Gemstone theatre productions, so that should be fantastic as well. The festival will conclude in early 2021 with a three-part feature on the Cultural Development Foundation itself. From the Government Information Service, Rog Varo Lawrence reporting. Scores of young women have hailed the skills learned at the Just Ended Basketball Clinic hosted by the Ministry of Youth and Sports. We have Ryan O'Brien to tell us more. Officials from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports are expressing satisfaction of the conduct of a two-week female basketball camp, which ended at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex Friday afternoon. Director of Sports, Patrick Matre, was present for the closing of the camp, and he suggests that it will go a long way in maintaining interest in female basketball and provide future national teams with a wide pool of talent to choose from. I must, I must admit that we are very pleased um, over what has happened over the last two weeks. In fact, it's not just only about basketball, but to ensure that the, 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 the young females that we have within the, 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 the free were able to get an appreciation of sport in general, yes, specifically basketball, but also the level of camaraderie and the, 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 the important skills that they learn. It's not just about an individual, but team play. And, and coming out of that, they're committed in forming their own nickel organization, their own club. So so they could continue to carry basketball. So what I see that is happening makes me extremely proud, extremely pleased for the support by the, uh, for the ministry and support. And to 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 say to 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 persons generally, I believe that the, the future of female basketball in St. Lucia looks extremely bright. The camp emerged from an initiative proposed by National Female Basketballer and Female Basketballer of the Year 2018 and 2019, Maya George. To have seen it completed was very pleasing to her, in addition to giving her peers the opportunity to learn the rudiments of the sport. I realized that although that there are a lot of interested girls, that we do not have any programs put in place for the girls. And so I decided to start a camp that would allow the girls the opportunity to learn and play the sport of basketball. One of the participants, Chris Ann Duncan, had her first exposure to basketball at the camp. Duncan was full of praise for the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports for allowing her colleagues to have such an opportunity during the summer vacation. This was my first ever basketball experience. It was a very good experience. The coaches were very patient. They, uh, we went through a lot of drills. They helped us a lot. I think and it, it built a lot of discipline, which I think is good. And I would like to really thank them for taking the initiative and, bring, and allowing us to come here today and teach us the sport. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour informs residents of Sunny Acres and the general public that the road at Sunny Acres behind Gablewoods Mall is now temporarily closed. The road closure is effective for the period 3rd to 7th September 2020 and is necessary to facilitate the removal, repair and replacement of the existing grill.
Residents and all road users are encouraged to make the necessary arrangements in light of the road closure. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor apologizes for any inconvenience. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Cut them loose, the anxieties, the worries, open up to possibilities, accept the uncertainties and cut them loose, the bitterness, the hopelessness, plant a seed of hope in your mind, it will grow and flourish in time. Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look, tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the Entienne Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au temps, Jesse. Monsieur, Madame, Department, qui n'est responsabilité pour les formations en gouvernement cette ici. Ça, c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale pays à Entienne. Quand vous êtes au Nouvelle Aquayol, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ici, j'ai signé un agrément et puis une organisation CARICOM qui a assisté pour divers développements. Ça, c'est CDF. Ça, c'est pour continuer l'effort pour établir un projet de touristique à village Pela. Initiative Sala, qui a été pour une meilleure occasion pour le business touristique à ce village Sala pour l'avantage des affaires touristiques qui sont available. Nous avons une grande présentation de CIAT qui était par être face au public à ce NTN jeudi passé. Côté Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney, avec plusieurs autres Grecs des affaires touristiques qui sont présents. Le ministre des Affaires touristiques, en cette ci Honorable Dominique Fede, a déclaré que lui et le Premier ministre, là, j'ai d'accord que tout ce progrès profite avec l'autre succès que cette ci a expérimenté en affaires touristiques. Pareil pour les pièces sortes, pareil pour les pièces significantes, si le pays a pas à goûter le business, les bénéfices qu'il y a d'ailleurs. Selon le ministre Fede, ça a une chose que ça a fait, c'est pour assurer qu'il est possible pour tout, bénéf... tout business qui est engagé dans l'affaire touristique à ce village, de trouver un petit job business avec un petit bénéfice en business touristique. Il y a une bonne cérémonie de ce qui a été passé. Le directeur exécutif pour l'organisation CDF, là, M. Reginald Soumar, si a un deuxième agrément pour plus de 900 000 dollars, mais pour commencer la construction et pour établir la façon que le projet Salah a marché. C'est le seul assistant Salah qui a aidé pour guider une meilleure route pour le projet ça a aussi encouragé l'autre agence pour nous l'attirer en ce programme qui a établi une meilleure façon pour s'aménager le projet touristique à ce village cette ci Le Premier ministre Honor Balen Chasse fait comprendre que l'initiative Salah c'est pour hausser et pousser tout secteur des affaires touristiques à cette ci et principalement les vivantes, culture, les artistes, musiciens, parmi l'autre. Et qui est pour embrasser l'initiative là, pour stamper ça qui est nous-mêmes et servir le projet touristique à ce village et là pour faire ça en réalité. Pays Canada, j'ai entré en la peine cette ci pour aider à adresser la situation maladie corona. J'ai dit passer plusieurs officiers du gouvernement, à ce premier ministre des Affaires Égalité et Justice, ministre des Affaires Développement Économique et ministre qui nous responsabilité pour adresser la situation de femmes et d'hommes à pays là, c'est l'honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, qui a participé à la cérémonie en studio NTNGIS pour accepter l'assistance Hot Canada pour aider particulièrement les femmes pays là qui trouvaient affectées, soit par le travail et bien l'autre façon en cause du corona. Le ministre des Affaires Femmes et Normes, c'est le Sion, le Dr. Gail Rigobert, qui est très appréciable pour l'assistance Canada. C'est le Dr. Rigobert, qui a l'assistance à la, qui a aidé les plus faibles et qui sont vulnérables en société, particulièrement en femme, pour continuer à vivre en bas de la COVID. 
from kika filthy way so already le farmer from kika le travail farmer et que c'est yo qui ni disability ni special consideration on va approcher ça là femme qui ka vive pas croyo yon et puis les enfants yo qui perd du travail yo en résultat de corona ka yo se trouver accessance docteur rigobert dit aussi la ka ni traitement avec divers équipements de protection contre covid pour yo qui ka pour tuer service santé principalement pour femmes lot ki ka pochire service ko police ek les autres ki engagé a travay agricole ek lot sekte aussi um ka trouve assistance a dans divers façon des équipe mek wa fè kwa les officiers de représentatif de organisation canada te aussi a de ces ceremonies là par zoom yo renforcer effort pays canada pour assister pays cette ci en bas situation malade de corona plusieurs millions de dollars en place pour ça a pas dit c'est assistance finance qui cette ci j'ai reçu en bas programme kon pa ho excidemment Ministère des Affaires Construction ka informé les résidents Jetrin ki chimé yo ka fermé pour faciliter construction Colvet ça ça sous mon sous chimé ça là chimé ka resté fermé pour 3 semaines et que ka encourager les résidents et que fait l'auto pour servir chimé grâce à Jiwa yo aussi ka conseiller conseiller ces chauffeurs l'auto là pour prendre bonne précaution comme c'est moi c'est sûr c'est mon sous chimé ça là bien et tuet c'est ça yo ka servir à présent Les résidents sont les écans aussi. Le ministère a fait savoir que le chemin est fermé pour un petit temps, commencé depuis les 3 et ça a été le 7 septembre. Le travail est là, c'est essayer de tirer, de manger et de placer le grid là qui a sur le chemin. Le ministère a encouragé tout ce qui a servi le chemin pour faire l'autre arrangement qui est nécessaire pour voyager. Le ministère des Affaires Construction a fait une grande apologie pour les pièces et convenances qui s'appellent une cause. C'est quoi ça nous bout nouvelle là Mon grand monsieur autant pour regarder. Pour avoir une invitation pour je ne puis moi encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, nous allons pour cette nouvelle à Creole. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement semaine et que je vous prépare pour caution quand mes gouins pour pas trouver la fièvre de dengue. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement semaine et que je vous prépare pour caution quand mes gouins pour pas trouver la fièvre de dengue. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement semaine et que je vous prépare pour caution quand mes gouins pour pas trouver la fièvre de dengue. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement semaine et que je vous prépare pour caution quand mes gouins pour pas trouver la fièvre de dengue. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement semaine et que je vous prépare pour caution quand mes gouins pour pas trouver la fièvre de dengue. Je vous souhaite tout Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jessie Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.